Hello. Hi. Carla Nicole. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Getting started again. Uh, started a little late, but we're on. Um, absolutely beautiful Sunday. Glad you guys are here. Um, for those of you who have never been to my show, this is uh, Live with Carla Nicole show every Sunday at 12 noon. Be sure to share this video because it is a new series called the Forgiveness Series. And the beautiful thing about forgiveness is to be able to um, break free from the hurt, the pain of being disappointed, saddened, uh, distraught, frustrated, all of those reasons why we can find ourselves in an unforgiving space. So for those of you that are just now joining, I want to welcome, hey, Olary and author Darren, glad you're here. Um, thanks for being here. It's beautiful today. It's Sunday. Um, I'm in Ohio. I don't know where you guys are, but welcome. Um, so today, uh, we're going to talk about how to say I'm sorry. Um, you know, for some people, saying I'm sorry is easy to do, but for other people, it's difficult to say I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to touch on that. But for those who, of you who have never been to the show, I'm Carla Nicole. I'm a single mother of two children. I have a daughter that's 18, soon to be 19 next, next month, and a son that just turned 10. So, um, And my spiritual mission is to help people to um, you know, get more centered with their forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is not easy to do, um, but it is something that is essential to have a better wider freedom in life so um i'm gonna try to find somewhere comfortable to get settled at beautiful scene as you can see just sailboats out here gorgeous it's a beautiful day today let me tell you it's a beautiful day so first off i want to talk to you guys about a poll that i have going and i asked the question is it easy for you to apologize is it, is it easy for you to say I'm sorry so um, I guess I should ask ask um, everyone that is watching is it easy for you to say you're sorry can you say you're sorry without um, feeling some type of way or or you know kind of have that lump in your in your throat to where you you're upset and, and you know actually I should have I shouldn't have done something or I shouldn't have said something or indirectly somebody was affected because of an action I did and can you say you're sorry is the question can you do that well um it depends I believe on how we were raised um you know um I know some people have um have had that instilled in them since they can remember um I know at least in my family where I'm from uh my mother was big about making sure that I uh, would apologize if I was in the wrong. Um, but she not only made sure I did so, she also um, led by example. So she made sure to say she was sorry um, when she was at fault as well. Not just to me, but to my family, you know, to my father or, you know, to other family members if she felt she wronged someone. So, um, you know... Uh, I think that sometimes it is basically instilled in us, at least for me and my family. Um, it was instilled in me very early on that I must apologize if I'm wrong. But I don't really think that it was a, a total uh, explanation. I just know if, you know, um, it was told to, um, to an aunt of mine or or my grandparents or something that I had did something that I had had no business doing to someone and um, my family would would insist that I uh, first of all owned what I did and then second of all um, tell the person that I did it to that I apologize and I'm sorry well you know I think sometimes we uh, we have by mm -hmm, we have been instructed 
early on, at least in a family like mine, we have been instructed early on to apologize and to say we're sorry without really, um, without really knowing why, per se. You know, um, I've seen parents will just demand their children to say they're sorry. Say you're sorry to your brother. Say you're sorry to your cousin. Say you're sorry. And they say, sorry, you know. <laughs> And it's like, well, are you explaining to them why they're saying they're sorry? I mean, just telling them to say they're sorry is one thing. But the sorry isn't about them. It's, about, it's not about the person they were, they, they did, that they did the harm to. But the sorry is for them to understand that their actions can affect someone else. So that's something we have to think about. Um, so, you know, I think sometimes as parents, we just start telling our children to say you're sorry, say you're sorry, but we need to actually ask them to take ownership of what it is that they're doing. Um, what happened? What did you do? Were you doing this? First of all, you need to acknowledge that you did something that was inappropriate or un that was unnerving to that person or wrong or disappointed that person. You first have to own yourself. <laughs> Own yourself and own your actions. So when we when we force our children to tell someone else we're sorry, without actually giving them the reason behind the sorry, um, I think we're doing them a disservice because we definitely need to tell our children the ownership of a, of a bad choice, the ownership of a bad call, the ownership of disappointing someone or hurting someone is vitally important that we digest in our spirit before we apologize. Sometimes we need a couple days or a couple nights or sometimes we need some thought process behind it. Why am I apologizing? Because we need to own why we are doing something like that. And I think sometimes we just say, get over there and tell them you're sorry. You tell them that you're sorry. And the child's like, sorry, and really doesn't know why. So I wanted to talk about the, the importance of um, learning the... Uh, the actual effects of what you've done. Hey, Red Man. Thanks, love. Thanks, love. I appreciate that. So you want to really think about, well, what did I do? You know, a lot of times we make we make decisions and we really don't think about everybody else's effect or how it's going to affect someone else. Just like, for instance, you know, we as single people, uh, we want to get run into relationships and we don't really realize that when we are getting involved in relationships, um, it affects other people, <laughs> especially your children. And we don't think about that too much. We just say, oh, well, we want to get in a relationship because we want to get in a relationship. And that's, that's fine. But who are you affecting in the decision you're making? Are you disregarding them or are you considering them? Because that's something that's very important when we're talking about saying I'm sorry. So that was just as an example. So I wanted to talk about that. First of all, um, I want to talk about the people that have a hard time saying I'm sorry. Um, you know, for those of you that struggle with apologies, understand the only way to break free of your lump in your throat from allowing you to convey your sorry is all coming and based from ego. Your ego is telling you that I don't have to say I'm sorry, even though you know you were dead wrong. That's not true. Let me tell you something. The physical lump that comes into the throat is trying to close you off from doing something that's right. So understand when, you're physically, when your throat physically closes up because you feel like I was wrong, I shouldn't have done something, and you did it anyway, and then it affected someone in a negative way, it's very important. What? What? Go back out there and I don't know why you went out there to do all that, Raylan. Wanted to put his feet in the water. Like, what were you thinking? With no towel or nothing. Like, <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, when, that, when, when your throat closes up, because there is a strong reason why that's happening. Number one, there's a fear. And the fear has nothing to do with anything but your image of yourself to yourself so think about this it's very important we often think well you know I have this perfect image to myself that I don't do any wrong okay 
Um, and so when you come to that point where you're like, you know what, I've done wrong and I shouldn't have, perhaps maybe if I say that I'm sorry and own the apology as, ooh, I shouldn't have done this. When you say that you're sorry to somebody, it's actually, and, and sincere with it, and you have an ownership to your, your bad call or your bad decision, it's really truly a, um, a freedom that you break free from learning how beautiful it is to say you're sorry to someone and they actually listen to it. And they actually sit back and say, wow, um, it took a lot for you to do that. And I appreciate it. Because it did hurt me or it did affect me in a way that you have no idea. But now that you own that your decision or your action or what you did to them affected them can actually ease the pain. Did you know that? It is crazy how many people don't realize you ease the pain when you apologize. But I noticed that in some families, apologies are not often given. So you can be dead wrong and not own it. And it just is what it is. But in order to get better with with life and make some changes we have to sometimes do something that is not very familiar in the family sometimes we have to be the bigger pick bigger person and sometimes we have to be the better example even though that example wasn't shown to us per se in our family um, once they start seeing it it can become contagious and when you learn how important I'm sorry not only frees you but it frees the person from the hurt it really does and it's like wow we're not we're all human <laughs> you know what I'm saying we're all human so it gets to the point where it's like well I'm human they're human we all make mistakes none of us are perfect so when we sat back and said you know I was just wrong on that I, I made a bad choice I shouldn't have done that I have some regrets it really does help you a lot by apologizing let's take a look at what red man said he said yes um, bosses on your work they don't like to say they're sorry he says he sees it at his job co-workers as well but he, he says saying sorry is not hard for him which is awesome but to some people it is yes and for those that have a hard time saying they're sorry I'm trying to get them to see that apology uh, what take off your shirt your top shirt and give it to me and then use your undershirt to dry off your feet so, you're right. I know, but I'm saying when you get done, you'll have your, your undershirt to dry your feet off. Um, so, the beautiful thing about it is, um, like you're saying, Red Man, a lot of people don't sit down and really pay attention to um, the joy of, of, of apologizing and what it does for those that has uh, apologized. First of all, um, when you apologize to someone, um, in sincerity and sincerity and you also own the fact that you sat down and paid attention to something that maybe you didn't see in making the affirmate affirmate uh, aforementioned decision before it happened and and you didn't really foresee or intend for them to be hurt in the process of your decision and that's important because I think a lot of times we just do things and we only see it from our, our, uh, our lens, not realizing that our decisions and choices we have affects other people. Now, Red Man, like what you're talking about at work, some people really aren't going to apologize there because they believe that, you know, um, it's going to take their power away especially bosses they believe it's going to take away their power if they apologize or they uh, admit to making a bad misinformed decision <laughs> and so they feel well if I apologize I'm owning I made this bad choice yes you are owning it but they don't realize how much more respect they will gain by having someone say, I actually made a bad call, this was my fault, and they come out and say, I actually told him or her to do this, 
and it was my bad call i was misinformed or i took it upon myself to make that that you know admin decision or whatever and when you have someone own it and understand that someone else had got affected because of your decision it just changes the game because it makes people see okay this person really really truly honestly did not do it in harm of me they just made the decision but didn't see that their decision not only affects me but affects other people in that decision but even in work you're still supposed to sit in your decision making and you're still supposed to own it because your team if you're a boss or a supervisor or you have a a a person that you know is your subordinate you have a it is first of all it's decent you have a decent a decency and you have a certain level of responsibility as a team lead to own when you're wrong period if you're not going to own it then you don't need to be in that supervisory position just that simple nobody has a right to make decisions and not apologize when you're all off the rip you're just doing stuff and you're going all off and saying stuff and you're not even making sure you're well informed and you're not even willing to take the bat for them after you went out here and you told these people your subordinates to do these things and they went out and did that and then it's like oh my god you affected all these other people now everybody's getting a reprimand a full blast email from the upper the higher ups telling me i'm wrong putting me on blast and you were the one that told me to do it that's not fair oh no problem red man i'm just saying it but this is an example perfect example of what happens when we have a have an issue with apologizing and saying i'm sorry but the reality is this in life you have to own your own mess your own crap your own shit we have a right to own our stuff you know what i mean and you're well you're much more well um respected when someone says i'm sorry i was wrong but let me tell you something a lot of people are, are afraid those who are afraid to apologize or have a issue apologizing to others let me give you something that i don't think a lot of people really realize when you say i'm sorry or you apologize about uh, something that you did or something someone was affected by a decision you made when you say that you're sorry and you are sincere with it there comes a newfound um, beauty in your soul because you're no longer perfect to you I want you to get that a lot of times when we think of ourselves we don't think of ourselves as flawed we think of the ideal, idealistic version of ourselves, but we're never wrong. Even as parents, I'm never wrong. I could say all day, well, Morgan do this and Braylon do that and always think that I'm supposed to be right all the time. And my children would not receive, actually would not receive my discipline as well if I constantly stay on top of them and never take it into account that maybe I made some bad calls or some bad choices or you know come to her and say you know what Morgan I apologize I, I didn't realize that I did that I, I, I don't want you to feel that way and being sincere in it it's easy to say I'm sorry and it be an empty I'm sorry did you know that we can say I'm sorry and it be as empty as an empty can <laughs> all right I'm sorry and shrug it off like I really I really don't care if you like it or not. I'm just going to say it so you'll sit down and shut up. That's not a, that's not really that's not really fulfilled. Um, I'm sorry or apology. Someone needs to know that you understand you hurt them. And sometimes just the admission alone isn't I'm sorry enough. But you admit it and then you apologize in sincerity. Ain't nothing like it. And another thing too. When you are actually apologizing, you remove you remove a lot of regret from your life. Think about that for just a minute. When you apologize or you say I made a bad call and you go to someone or you tell those people or that person, "Hey, I I apologize. What I did here, I shouldn't have done." Or I, I let me give you the reason or the back the, the backstory to why I made the, this decision. But 
now that I look back, I regret it and I, and I, I shouldn't have done that. And you would admit it to them. You will find out that, you know, I always say we don't want to go in our deathbed and look up and say all these shoulda, coulda, wouldas in our mind before we leave the planet. So it's very es essential that we apologize when we sit back and say, hey, I made, I made a bad call. I made a mistake. Do it now. Don't wait till you're almost out of here to try to cover up. Well, I should have said this. I should have done this. I could have said that. We save it. We save ourselves from a lot of pain when we own it, when we admit it, when we sincerely care about what we did and how it affected someone else. And then when we sincerely say, I'm sorry. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize the power in that. So many people could just be like, wow. Do you understand the burden that's lifted off of people? People can sometimes be so heavily burdened by an action you did 10, 20 years ago and still hurt. Because they don't believe that you even remotely understand the gravity to your decision. Or that you don't realize the effects you had on, on, on your decision. Thanks, thanks, Charles. I appreciate that. But yeah, I have to. I have to apologize to my kids if I, if I'm wrong. Um, and but I have to. But I'm, I'm big about allowing my children to have a voice as well. I think it's imperative that you know, as parents, we we always allow our children to talk. And it not be from a judgmental space, but give them the freedom to say what's on their heart and mind, respectfully, of course. But that way, it gives them the power of understanding, oh, I have independent thinking. Just because you're my child, you and I are not Siamese twins. And so I, what I see and what you see is two totally different things. Our perspectives may be completely and totally different. You know, uh, our opinions, everything are, are different. So bring me into your world and allow me to hear your side so I can understand how did I violate or how did I hurt you or how did I dismiss you so I can see it from your side. And then allow me to then give you my perspective of what I was actually doing or how I was parenting that way or what I did so that you can see, oh, well, mom was coming from a loving space. It just didn't feel loving to me. I felt you were mean, mom, or I felt you were harsh, mom, or whatever. As an an example well I may have been but you wouldn't have heard me any other way at that time because you weren't listening to me you know as an example so I mean we just have to we have to understand and it's not it's not unmasculine guys to not say you're sorry I want I want the gentlemen to listen to me now because I know you know you gents you know you guys are my guys man and I look out for you guys go ahead um, you guys are my guys so I want I want to give you um, a word as well. It's not unmasculine to apologize. Matter of fact, you're going to be better, more respected when you own that you made a bad call. You know what's funny is a lot of times in life we sit around and we talk about how in sports uh, a coach can make a bad call. A coach can make a bad call on a, on a play. And we're like, oh, why did you make that call, man? That was a bad call. And, you know, in sports, if you notice, they are not they are not replacing coaches every week from every bad call that coach made. They do what? They forgive the coach, right? They still allow the coach to be the head coach, whether he made bad calls last game or not. He's still in the game unless he's consistently not being um, not using the proper uh, rule books for for winning the game. So you know, of course, there's 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 you guys get this part. I know when it comes to when it comes to games, right? Y'all forgive that coach when he messes up the whole game. Like, man, how did you do that? How did you mess up the whole game? But if you notice, the fans still have a love for that coach right I, correct me if i'm wrong but but if you notice the coach is forgiven and if you notice that 
a lot of times if we take a look at life like like how you men take a look at sports and really look at it for what it's worth. Men, that is not unattractive for you to say, babe, hey, listen, I know I said some stuff yesterday. I was in a real bad negative space. I came home on some other stuff. I wasn't feeling real good. My stomach was hurting. And I was saying stuff to you that was just out of pocket. I was really disrespectful to you, babe, and I'm sorry. I apologize, man. I want you to know I love you and I apologize. Do you know what that does? <laughs> you probably will get a lot of love making within the next couple of weeks. Just telling you. Because when a man owns the fact that he was coming in acting ignorant, because see, a real woman isn't going to just throw you away. We don't y'all y'all fans don't throw away your coaches, right? So we're a real woman's not gonna throw you away because you had a bad day or because you said something maybe off the rip that wasn't too wasn't too kosher. But what she will do is she'll be looking at you side eye for a while. But when you come back and you say, "Man, I, you know, I did come in kind of, kind of jacked up yesterday, and you know, um, I apologize. I'm sorry." It is amazing to a woman when a man says he's sorry, and that does not make you feminine, gentlemen. Understand that that does not make you feminine. That makes you a real man. That makes you a man that has integrity. That means that you as a man can self-reflect. A lot of us cannot self-reflect. We don't know what self-reflection is because we believe we're perfect. Anyone that's narcissistic or egotistical or believes they're perfect will not apologize for nothing, whether they're dead wrong or not. But those people or those gentlemen that say, hey, Man, listen, I, I really messed up yesterday. I, I, I'm sorry. It's powerful. It's powerful. And I know y'all gentlemen know about the, y'all know about sports, so I know y'all know what I'm talking about. When, when the coach makes a bad call the whole game, you're like, what the hell? What, what playbook are you using? You know you can't use that, that game book that you got there on this team. <coughs> Excuse me on this team because you know this team is way too sharp you got to come with something new more advanced unpredictable stuff but you didn't but we love you anyway hey you know we lost but it's all good well, it's getting ready to hurry up the charging case yes Braylon. so we have to focus on how to um stay um, aware of what decisions we're making we need to get away from being so angry about what we're not doing and what we really truly need in 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 relationships and that that means all relationships that means relationships with family relations love relationships relationships and friendships we need to make sure that we're aware of what it, we really truly need when it comes so we have to be mindful that, you know, we listen to our friends, families, and also that we would never imagine will uh, truly look out for us. Um, but if we are honest with self and we earn the, the opportunity to say, I apologize, I'm sorry, um, the decision I made was, was wrong. Um, it is nothing like actually someone saying, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate that you um, have been uh, self-reflecting and looking at you um, and seeing how it is you can, um, you know, fix what has been broken within our, fr our friendship, our family, um, because it's not easy. Like I said, Apologizing isn't always easy, but once you learn the power of it, you'll find that wow, this this is this is there is a freedom of doing it. There is a beauty. Thank you, babe. There is a beauty of it once we once we accomplish it, um, and we learn like oh my gosh, I didn't realize that you know I will be um, better off by. Um, letting go of the hurt but more importantly um, making sure that um, I 
look out for for okay so um i hope this helps someone be sure to make sure that you share this video um again it's not always easy to say i'm sorry but once you learn how powerful it is it is a beautiful gift you can give someone um and in the process of that you are showing you are a, a man or a woman of integrity you know we learn so much about self when we get out of thinking we're perfect when we see that we do have some flaws <laughs> When we do see that we have some challenges, we do have some things that we need to work on, it really it really brings a humbleness to us and that's where true beauty and that's where true beauty comes from. All right. So I hope this helps. I love what you said, Joe. He says, um, sometimes people refuse to accept your apology because of their ego. Yes. Now I will be addressing that um, when someone just will not will not accept your apology and, and um show you how to break free from the chains of someone uh, just denying a denying your apology I will be going into that so Joe I'm so glad you you um, brought that up but you are kind of jumping the gun because I will be discussing about how some people refuse to accept your apology even if you're in a sincere space or you're coming from a sincere um, state of mind not everybody will accept it so that's something that we're going to go over in this series is how do you deal with that all right well it is a beautiful sunday everybody enjoy it be sure to share this video i'm so glad red man you were here and and loved everything that you talked about um and i hope everybody uh has a great day all right so um thanks again for being a part of this uh forgiveness series and for those of you that just jumped on, I see you, T Lane and and and, and Andre. Um, don't worry about it. I will be uh, posting this, so you'll be able to check it out. If you're not a part of my my group, it's.